section D, you learned about storage methods and facilities for raw and processed moe and wool in terms of your company's policies and procedures. We also discussed care, handling and transporting procedures. The section further focused on specific problems and preventative measures in relation to material storage and handling. In this section, section E, you will consider ethical and sustainable practices that should be adopted in the moe and wool factory. After completing this section, you will be able to explain why it is important to know about sustainable practices in the moe and wool production environment, explain what is meant by traceability, identify and explain the four byproducts of the moe and wool industry, and explain how the production of moe and wool can help the environment instead of harming it. Before we start our discussion, it is important that we all have the same understanding of the following two terms. One, sustainable production, and two, ethical practices. Imagine we started cutting down trees quicker than what they could grow. In a few years time, there won't be any trees left. In this example, it can be said that we have not acted in a way that is sustainable. If we had to practice sustainable production in our own work environment, it means that we would produce moe and wool in such a way that we do not pollute the environment. We saved energy. We produced the moe and wool in an economical way. And our workplaces were safe and healthy spaces to be in. Let's turn our attention to ethics. The word ethics comes from the Greek word ethos, which means habit. Ethics has to do with what is good for individuals and society. Adopting ethical practices means that we take actions to ensure that production processes are not damaging to the people who buy and use our products and to the society. It means that we have to follow specific guidelines and set standards in our workplace. These days, it is easy to obtain information on just about any topic through the internet. For example, people are able to make better choices about where to send their children to school, keeping up to date with the latest electronic gadgets and which brands are better value for money. All of this is possible because people are able to find information easily. In the same way, clients of the moe and wool industry are gaining more knowledge of how moe and wool is produced. They have become more aware of how the different production processes could influence the environment and they would not want to support any industry that harms the environment. It is therefore important for them to know that sustainable practices are used in the production of moe and wool and that the environment and animals are preserved. They want to know where their money is going and who the people behind the fibers and products are. The wool and moe industry has come a long way in addressing issues relating to fair and ethical, sustainable and humane production. The industries have produced guidelines and are investigating new technologies to facilitate this transition. For example, South African growers of wool and moe have to abide with set standards. Some of these are set out in the Responsible Wool Standard and the Responsible Moe Standard. These standards may differ from each other, but they all provide good practice guidelines for these industries. Sustainable and ethical practices in moe and wool production are receiving attention all over the world. In New Zealand, for example, the ZQ Wool Certification Standard promotes animal welfare, environmental sustainability, quality fibre, traceability and social responsibility. There is also Nativa in South America who have also developed and implemented a protocol to enhance animal welfare, environmental management and socio-economic welfare of farmers and their communities. The concept of traceability is another important feature for sustainable production. Traceability is a system whereby wool and moe can be traced back to the farm from where it comes by using bale numbers. Many farmers have welcomed the requirement of traceability and they take pride in producing their product in a fair and sustainable way. The handling of waste is very important to the natural fibers industry. Attention to this aspect of the business has a direct impact on profits. These wastes are grouped into four classes. 
namely noils, soft waste, hard waste and finishing waste. Noils are the short fibers that are separated from the long wool in the combing process. Because of their excellent condition, they are equal in quality to virgin wool. They constitute one of the major sources of waste in the industry and are reused in high quality products. Soft waste is another high quality material that falls out during the spinning and carding stages of production. Reusable wastes such as sliver, lap bits, roving ends and pneumophil wastes are normally termed as soft waste. A roving is a long and narrow bundle of fiber. This material is usually reintroduced into the process from which it came. Yarn waste is not reusable, hence it is called hard waste. Hard waste is the waste that are generated by spinning, twisting, winding and warping. This material is considered to be of lesser value as it requires significant reprocessing. Finishing waste is the lowest grade of waste and includes a wide variety of clippings, short ends, sample runs and defects. Since this material is so varied, it requires a great deal of sorting and cleaning to retrieve that which is usable. In your participant handbook, you will read about MOE South Africa's sustainability program and the platforms used for tracking. MOE South Africa also works closely with the MOE Empowerment Trust to assist emerging farmers to develop successful and sustainable Angora farming initiatives. The MOE Empowerment Trust is a non-profit organization focused on uplifting and partnering with black South African farmers who show potential to succeed in the MOE farming industry. The South Africa MOE Cluster is a non-profit company that is dedicated towards the enhancement of MOE production, processing and manufacturing in South Africa. Such as with MOE, the retail sector wants to buy wool products from farmers that practice sustainability, animal welfare, ethics and care for the environment. At factory level, sheared wool must be prepared, packed and offered in line with requirements of the Cape Wool's SA classing standards. The world wants a solution to plastic pollution and synthetic fibers are polluters. Like other animal-derived fibers, moe and wool products do not have a negative impact on the environment. Unlike synthetic textiles, no carcinogenic, hormone disrupting or organ damaging chemicals are used in the production of wool and moe. Apart from certain types of dyes, the production process does not introduce any toxins into the environment. Best practices and assurance protocols must be followed and maintained to ensure that firstly, our natural environment is not harmed. Secondly, to satisfy the requirements of consumers worldwide by supplying the highest quality product. And thirdly, for South Africa to remain a top producer and supplier of moe and wool fibers to the rest of the world. In this section, we discuss the importance of sustainable practices in the moe and wool production environment. We briefly discuss different bodies in South Africa that promote ethical and sustainable practices in the moe and wool industries. We discover the meaning and importance of traceability. We then consider the byproducts of the moe and wool industries and how they should be dealt with in a sustainable manner. Lastly, we discussed how moe and wool production should be undertaken so as to not harm the environment. We have now reached the end of section E and we are almost at the end of this learning program. Well done on reaching this point. Before we conclude the program, we would like to remind you of the steps you need to take to ensure that you will receive your certificate for successful completion of this pilot learning program. Complete tasks 10 and 11 in your workbooks. You will find the answers to these tasks by reading through section E in the handbook. Next, you should complete task 12, where you will reflect on the whole training program. Finally, you should complete the summative assessment on page 10 of your workbook. Once you are satisfied that you have completed all of the tasks, please hand your workbook to Mr. Jongile Masweni, who will hand it over to Siawela for assessment. Siawela will notify you of the outcome of the assessment and if you are successful, you will receive your gift pack and certificate. 
thank you for taking the brave step to enroll for this learning program. We trust that you have found the content enriching and useful. We wish you every success as you complete your assessment.